join Forum IES Academy, trusted by hundreds of toppers, including IES Rank 1, Anudeep Durisheti, Shruti Sharma, and Ishita Kishore. Hello, yes, friends. In this part, we are going to understand some basic thing about concepts of a state. Okay, and we are going to make a distinction between terms like a state, society, civil society. How these terms, these concepts are different from each other. Okay. Again, the discussion is quite basic. The purpose, you know, the whole series is aiming you to prepare for foundation course. Okay, so we will avoid scholarly dis uh, descriptions and we'll focus on the most essential part that is essentially what these terms actually mean. Okay, the state, society, civil society. Okay, starting with the state. But before I start a state, as a student of political science, you must know one thing that most of the concepts, many concepts in political science discipline are contested concepts, contested in the sense that there is no consensus or agreement that exists among the political scientists, among the scholars uh, with regard to the final meaning of those terms. Okay, so contested, the word contested conveys this, this, that lack of agreement or consensus among the scholars, among political scientists, with regard to the final meaning of that concept or idea. Okay, so like many concepts in political science, a state is also a contested concept. That means there is lack of consensus agreement with respect to the final meaning of the term. Okay, now although a state is quite central to many important, many meaningful discourses in political science, but even then, it is a contested concept. So that is something which is surprising. Now contestation is not just superficial. This contestation is actually quite real. And it reached to a point whereby on some occasions, scholars like David Easton suggested to completely replace this term state with term like system. But that is another debate and that is something that you are going to study anyway in both paper one and paper two theory part. We are going to discuss that some other time. Here, we are concerned with the most basic uh, basic understanding that what a state is. Okay? You study that as part of GS also. But from political science perspective, the understanding would be a little bit deeper. Okay, Although not scholarly, because that is not the purpose of this series. Okay, So to define a state in most simple terms, you can say that it is a political association having some sovereign jurisdiction over a territory. A political association having sovereign sovereignty or sovereign jurisdiction over a territory. Okay, You can say that it is a kind of political community which is eternal, an eternal form of political community. Okay, Now, eternal word is something that is important and you are going to compare it with other, other political entities and then you will understand how that is important. Okay, just recall those basic polity classes where you are taught that the state is a political entity which comprises sovereignty, territory, population, and the government. Okay, so you already know, might be knowing that state comprising sovereignty, uh, territory, population, and the government. But in order to actually understand it, in order to really understand a state, you first should realize that a state is basically an abstract idea. Okay? Abstract idea. Okay? So a state is an abstraction and comparing it with government, you find that government is a concrete reality. Okay? A state as an abstraction comprises all public institutions and also the body politic that is the citizenry. While in case of government, you know and you can pinpoint those people who actually constitute the government. Okay? 
So those people who constitute the government are any way part of body politic, the larger domain that we have, citizenry. And in that sense, those who constitute the government are actually part of a state because everyone, all, the whole body politic is, is part of a state. A state encompasses the whole body politic. And government, because of this, this link, this reason, is part of a state. Okay? A state encompasses the whole body politic, which also includes those people who constitute the government. And in that sense, government is part of, just a part of a state. Okay? Now, a state, as I said, is a eternal political, eternal form of political community. That would mean that a state continues to existence. A state's a state exists in perpetuity. Government may come and go. Government can be altered, amended, or changed, but a state remains unchanged. Government is temporary, while a state is is permanent. Okay. Also understand that government, that is, you can also call it political executive does everything on the behalf of a state. You can also say that government is one medium through which the authority of a state is exercised. There may be other mediums also, for example, administration or uh, you can call it bureaucracy or permanent executive. Okay? So that is the point uh, of distinction between government and state. Okay? Now understand, that while you go on explaining the uh, features of, of a state, there are some defining features. So one defining feature of a state is sovereignty. Okay? So sovereignty here would mean that a state having sovereignty would mean a state having absolute undisputed authority is standing above all other associations. So stand, a state stands above all other associations. Okay? And unlike government, Unlike government, it has impersonal character and also the power structure. So the power structure character of a state is impersonal, while in case of government, you know that there are people who constitute the government. Okay. Another feature that you can uh, just mention here is, is this, that a state represents public good. It always rep represents some common good. While government on occasions, on many occasions, may seem to be representing or may seem to be working for certain parties and interest. Okay, people constituting the government may be working somehow to, so that they could manage to retain power. But a state always represents the public interest, always represents the common good. Okay, that is another point of distinction that you can make here. Okay, considering this, this feature of sovereignty, you can further extend it. The extension of this sovereignty feature of the state is this, that a state legitimizes, not only that, it also provides complete control over all means of violence. Okay? So a state legitimizes and provides complete, total control over all means of, means of violence, all ways through which violence can be exercised. And that would mean that all the acts and decisions of a state are considered binding, they are considered legitimate. Okay? A state can also, you can say, legitimately, legitimately, that is an important term, use the coercive power to enforce obedience towards its laws or, or rules or regulations. It can go on enforcing the obedience. Now, if there is some deviant behavior towards this kind of activity done by the state, then that deviant behavior can also be legitimately punished by the state. Okay? So, a state can go on legitimately punishing the deviant behavior. Okay? Now, this particular feature of a state whereby it can go on enforcing, legitimately enforcing the obedience, uh, in this context, you can make a distinction between a state and society. Okay? So what is society? It is made up of some voluntary associations or all kind of voluntary associations are actually part of society. Okay, one common feature uh, of a state and society is that, that both consist of people, both actually include people 
who are engaged in cooperative activity in a territory. But society is more concerned with social order. It is more concerned with social order while state is more concerned with some kind of legal order. Okay? The difference is that society cannot legitimately enforce the obedience. Okay? So there will be certain norms of societies. Society cannot go on legitimately enforcing the obedience through sanction of punishment. While state can do so. Okay? We are already understood that state can go on legitimately using uh, the violence to enforce obedience. That is something that society cannot do. Okay? So society cannot go on enforcing obedience towards its norms. At max, what society can do is to expel any deviant behavior. Okay, because of the voluntary nature or of its association. Okay, so that is a distinction between state and society. Now, the final term that is civil society. Also understand that. So society is a broader term. Okay. You already understood what is the difference between state and society. It is more concerned with social order, while state is more concerned with legal order. State can go on enforcing the obedience, Okay, can go on enforcing the obedience legitimately, while society cannot do so. Okay, It can go on expelling the member, if that member is showing any kind of deviant behavior. Okay, so society is a broader term and that includes all kind of um, interactions or relationships. While civil society consists of organized, voluntary, organized, voluntary associations or organizations that operate apart from the government. Okay, so it includes organizations like clubs, unions, NGOs, non-profits, and many other associations, many other organizations that operate independent of the state, independently of the state. Okay? So what they do? Civil society, you can also understand it by, by taking it as a bridge between individual and the state. Okay? So civil society is a bridge between individual and a state playing the role like advocating for a certain issue or promoting political participation or offering certain social services because the elements of social uh, civil society are indulged also in political domain. Okay, Although there is a distinction that needs to be drawn between what is public and what is private. And in that case, civil society domain is independent of the government, independent of the state. Okay, The sovereignty feature of a state is also something which reinforces the idea of public-private divide, but that is another debate, again something which we need to talk separately. But you should notice that civil society consists of organized, voluntary and often politically active elements that operate independently of the state. Okay, it can also be taken as a bridge between individual and state, advocating for a certain issue or offering social services or promoting political participation. Okay, a vibrantly functioning domain. And that is why you see that uh, totalitarian states, for example, Germany under Hitler or Russia under Stalin, these states did not provide much freedom to civil society. They strictly regulated or restricted the domain of civil society. While liberal states uh, actively promoted the domain of civil society. So much so that when it comes to civil society, it is it is very important component of a liberal democracy. Okay? A liberal democracy is known for having a vibrantly flourishing civil society. Okay? So these are the basic points with respect to state, society, and civil society. Although to actually understand it in a scholarly manner, you need further elaboration. Okay, but that is not the purpose of the series. In the next part, we are going to understand authority, power, and legitimacy. Okay, so what are the connections between these terms and how 
that actually matters how that is something which is related to something that you already have understood now that is a state okay so this is all thank you